Is a tool length sensor just a fancy gimmick or is it actually useful? I wanted to find out the accuracy and the real time savings compared to manual tool changes. A tool length sensor is basically two switches in a metal body covered in glue or gunk to waterproof it. The first one is used for the actual tool length measurement and the second one is a safety feature called over travel switch which is wired in series with the e-stopper hold button. How do I know? Because I crashed mine and I had to disassemble and repair it. I'll set up a dial indicator and do 5 semi-automatic tool changes and then 5 manual tool changes. The measuring accuracy in my setup is around 0.01 mm. The first tool change. This will raise the C-axis to allow for better access. Then we press start, it will measure the offset and it should return to the exact same point. Minus 0.02 mm deviation is pretty decent. Now we will do this procedure 4 more times. Initiate the tool change, change the length of the tool, measure the offset and drive back to the indicator. The average deviation with the semi-automatic tool changes is 0.016 mm or half a thou. Now to the accuracy of manual tool changes. I'm setting the C-axis to zero when the dial indicator reads zero. Then we find the offset between the indicator and the waste board with a piece of paper. With the paper barely being grabbed, I copy the C offset. This value is the distance between the waste board and the dial indicator reading zero. I'll do the tool change, or to be more accurate, I simply change the tool stick out, find the waste board height with a piece of paper again, insert the C offset we found earlier and drive back to the dial indicator. Plus 0.04 mm deviation is also not terrible for guessing with a piece of paper. From there on it's just rinse and repeat. Change the tool, find the waste board height again, insert the C offset from earlier and measure. The accuracy test shows also manual tool changes with manual offset finding can be a viable option, but are a lot more hassle. For me this round clearly goes to the tool length sensor. It's more convenient and more accurate. For the time comparison test I've prepared the simple push stick. It features five different tool paths. The first one is a roundover toolpath, followed by a chamfer toolpath, then a 2mm downcut toolpath, then we have a 2mm upcut bore here, and then lastly a 2mm upcut contour toolpath. To get the semi-automatic tool changes to work, you need to make sure your post processor puts out uh, M6, that's the tool change G code. I'm using the Gribble Hard post processor. If you don't have it, you can simply install it. Uh, you download it from the GitHub and then add it here via import. Usually you would create your G-Code by right-clicking and create NC program, but I am using the Tim Patterson patch called Post Process All. This simply uh, restores your rapid movements because Fusion limits your rapid movements to the feed movements, which can be a little bit on the slow side. If you also want to install the post process all patch, you download it from the GitHub, go to utilities, add-ins, script and add-ins, add-ins and then here on the plus and add the location where the post process all patch is located and then make sure it runs on startup. Now you should also have this button here, but now to the CNC. Before we start, I want to give you the settings I use. Under the Gribble settings tab, you need to set your tool change mode to automatic touch off at G59.3. 
So when you send a M6G code, it will move the tool to this coordinate system and then start probing. Under the offset tab, you need to set your G59.3 coordinate system to the location where the tool length sensor is located on the waste board. And you also need to set the G28 coordinate system to minus 10 or the difference between your shortest and longest tool. Otherwise, it would drive the C-axis into the end stop if you switch from a shorter to a longer tool. It took me a while, or to be more precise, I bothered the smart people on the Discord long enough, so we figured out a solution. The issue is, when your spindle is at C-max, which Fusion 360 outputs at the beginning, and you switch from a shorter tool to a longer tool via the M6 G-code, it wants to put the tool tip to the exact same location. But since the tool is now longer, it drives the C-axis into the limit switch. And that's the reason why we need to offset G28 by the difference between your shortest and longest tool. At this point I want to thank the print and C community and the people on the Discord. Everybody here is very supportive and there is a remarkable culture of conversation. Now to the fun part. I've prepared the tools we're gonna use, mount the plywood with double-sided tape, find C0, Find X and Y zero and send it. We've saved almost 20% machine time with the tool length sensor. So given the price these gadget costs, I think it's a no-brainer. Your work pieces will be more accurate, you will be faster done. So get yourself one, don't skip the wiring of the over-travel switch and thanks for watching.